Well, hey, everybody. Again, passion and purpose. I just love doing these things because we get to just talk real and do it out of relationship. And hey, for those who didn't hear last week, my new co-host, Jordan Ogden, we now call him J.O., <laughs> And uh, for those who are watching this by video, the reason I have on this sweatshirt and this beanie is it was cold outside this morning, didn't get a chance to take a shower. So I just said, hey, here we are. Let's just go with it. That's great. That's great. Uh, So Jordan, we've been talking about um, lessons learned from 2021, things that we're observing in the culture or things we're observing in our own Antioch community or things that we need to address. Mm -hmm. So uh, throw us into today's topic. Yeah. Go for it. Well, Yesterday, we were talking about four four ways to deal with sin. And just on the front end, I want to share what I got out of it. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll have you walk us through. So for me, um, the, the generational aspect from Exodus uh, really stood out. Just this really, is no, one more topic. Yes. The topic is dealing with sin. Small dealing topic. Very, yes. very small, but, just but, but, but significant. Yeah, <laughs> that's a joke. Very but big yeah, game. very much, very much of a joke. It stood out to me God's heart again yeah. for uh, restoration that he mm-hmm. wants blessing to extend generationally, mm-hmm. you know, and but we can I can get deceived and be like, oh, he just wants to, to nail me or whatever. And so that correction mm-hmm. from the word of God, so helpful. And then where the, the family of origin and I'm from a counseling or pastoral perspective, you know, it is a formative. Our families of origin, whatever they were, healthy or not, are right. formative. Yep. But there it can be taken to an extreme like sure. everything. Right. And then uh, the emphasis on identity. I mean, Christy and I, from a parenting perspective, identity is a very big deal in our lives, but even that can become uh, positioned in a way to where I can be absolved from my own responsibility for sin. So those were a couple of things that I know I highlighted in my notes. So I would love for you to walk us through just take us sure. back to, you know, we're born into sin. Sure. There's, okay. there's one. There you go. There's a, there's a big one. So I think that what, what how I want to frame this again, the reason uh, I want to say this is a personal admonition for all of us, but it's also a body of Christ's observation right. of, again, because of our need in our therapeutic culture to be understood and to feel emotionally connected to everything mm-hmm. that we're doing, I think we've lost a little sight of the big picture. So let me just state again the big picture. Yes. God created us perfectly, male and female. Um, he created us with everything that we need for life and godliness. And he said, but don't go your own way because then uh, sin will enter the world. So Adam and Eve, they go their own way, then sin enters the world. So then every problem that we see on planet Earth, every problem inside of me, every problem outside of me is because of sin, which literally means missing the mark or the original design of God, or the original intent. So in the end, my greatest enemy in life is not even the devil, let alone people. It is sin. Sin, of course, the enemy fuels that. And of course, people carry that. Right. But it is sin that's the problem. So if we deal with sin right. rightly, then we get back to the original design of God and we right. live as free people right. able to serve and love as God intended. Yes. All right. So here's four observations. Reminders to everybody, or maybe for the first time for you to realize this, is we are all born into sin. Mm-hmm. Psalm 20, uh, excuse me, 51, verse 5, David said, in sin, my mother conceived me. In sin, I was born into the world. Mm-hmm. And what David understood was that though we're made in the image of God, and every person is made by the hand of God, so there's an aspect of beauty in everyone. Mm-hmm. There's also a flaw in everyone because we're born into sin. Mm-hmm. We're born both good and evil, sure. right? And it shouldn't take us long to realize that if you've been around children or had your own children, as soon as that child doesn't get their way, they begin to express their will in an unholy fashion, right? Right? Screaming, yelling, kicking, throwing things, whatever, (laughs) or passively pouting. Sin is evident. And so it's the parent's job to uh, graciously but clearly control sin Mm. until that child can find Jesus to deal with their own sin by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. So that's a whole nother day, a whole nother topic. Well, that's so that they don't destroy themselves and others. Exactly. Right. Because sin destroys yes. always. So 
what I would say to all of us, just a reminder is yes, people are made in the image of God and there's goodness in everyone. There is also sin in everyone. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God, which right. means the intended design of God, right. God's glory. And, and the wages of sin is death, mm -hmm. if not dealt with appropriately. Right. And, um, and so my number one admonition is, everyone's a sinner, everybody needs a savior, mm -hmm. not just for that one-time prayer of consecration of I'm yours, Lord, but also for that daily submission to God, right. that it's sin in me that's the challenge of the day. And if that's submitted to God and recognized as a flaw in me, mm -hmm. then I can um, not be defensive uh, to, to other people, but I can be submitted to God and realizing that I am a uh, a, a vessel that houses both the beauty of God, mm -hmm. but I also have a propensity to sin like anybody else. Right. So I'm not defensive all day long. I'm humbly submitted all day long Good. to God and His rule and reign. That's great. Okay, so that's number one. Right. I'm born into sin. The second observation, which I think has been a lot of great work done, both in the secular world and in the Christian world, is our family of origin and the power of it. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that I still live under my parents' influence, right. good and bad, even though I'm a born again child of God, even though I've changed, even though I'm way different from them, right. as they did not kind of take a Christian worldview in their uh, life and parenting. Um, but, but we all live with the consequences of our parents' sin mm. uh, and or our parents' leadership or lack thereof. Mm. And how we deal with it, though, is more important than even recognizing the power of it. Right. So once I recognize the power of it, how do I deal with it? So on the sin side, uh, my dad uh, had sexual sin in his life. And therefore, I would say that all of, uh, at least his sons, had a propensity to sexual sin mm -hmm. because it says in Exodus 20, verse 5, Five that the that the sins of the generations of evil have been uh, will be multiplied to the third and fourth generation, but the blessing to the thousandth generation for those who love and honor God. Mm -hmm. So because my dad did not deal with his sin, it opened up a door right. that then was carried on in our lives, and it and that's real. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would say that my mom's own bitterness and and anger and unforgiveness and all that stuff created massive problems in our life and our family. But once I came to Jesus and I realized I was a sinner and needed a savior, so now I've gotten saved. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that their sin had affected me. Instead of blaming mm -hmm. them, I identified it. I repented of it myself. And I said, now in the name of Jesus, I don't live under the curse of my family. Right. I live under the blessing of heaven. Jesus became a curse on our behalf. So I forgive mom and dad. I bless mom and dad. I release them into the hands of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I cut off every generational curse in the name of Jesus. Right. I will not live under the identity or the um, influence of my parents' ungodliness. I will live unto God right. in his way because he's my father. It says this, even for those who've been abandoned and left by their parents, mm -hmm. David said this in Psalm 27, 10, though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Right. So God is trying to reparent us, to father us and care for us. So we must recognize the holes in our life, mm -hmm. but we don't hold in bitterness and unforgiveness our parents right. to determining our lives. Right. One more balancing statement. That does not mean for us, we had to put boundary on our kids' um, time with my parents because of their ungodly choices. So we did put boundary on them, but not bitterness. Uh -huh. Boundary right. and bitterness are two different things, right. okay? Right. So once we recognize all of my problems came from my parents, mm -hmm. you can't live there in bitterness and keep looping there right. and demanding that these parents alive or dead justify or make you whole again. Sure. Remember, those who hurt you can't heal you, mm. right? The healer is Jesus. Right. Let me just give another illustration. If, if, if uh, you're walking down the road and somebody walks up to you and shoots you, and let's say in this illustration, it's your parents. And you are sitting there laying, bleeding, and you're screaming out, get me to the hospital, get to the hospital. And they walk off because they don't hear you. They don't understand. But 
you have the opportunity to you're just wounded enough or if you don't get a hospital you're not going to get you're not going to live but you have enough energy to make it to the hospital if you don't get up and get to the surgeon right you're dead but if you're sitting on the road demanding that the people that shot you take you to the surgeon you're dead yeah it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen so that does not mean especially christian parents don't need to repent don't need to own their stuff Mm -hmm. and it would be delightful if they would own everything they've ever done but for me to let them to determine my destiny in life is just not going to work right because I need to go to the surgeon, Jesus. I need to go to my savior, Jesus. I need to find the father, God himself. And then out of my healing, reach back in hopes to heal them and restore them. But because I can't change them, I need to take myself to the throne of grace. That's good. Okay, so I've got the effects of my innate sin. Mm -hmm. I have the effects of um, generational sin. And then I have the effects of sins that people have done against me. So we all have that journey and uh, as a child being bullied by someone, being called a name, being uh, picked at for a flaw or a weakness or something that was perceived by somebody else. And again, uh, so many painful things that happen to children that shouldn't happen. It, it, and down to the extremes of sexual abuse and physical abuse and, and bullying and, and all that stuff people say, are you, you know, we need to make a greater stand against all this stuff. And I'm like, absolutely. I've been against sin from the time I've known Jesus. Sure. And, I'm, and I think that that's, that, that's there, let's do whatever we can to stand against it personally and as a culture of people mm-hmm. sinning against others. And at the same time, because people are sinners, it's going to happen. Right. So I, as a parent, I want to protect my children from the journey as much as possible, mm-hmm. but I also want to equip them for the journey. Right. How do you deal with an offense? How do you deal when somebody calls you right. this, that, or the other? How do you deal when you're disappointed in another Christian or another friend? Or you know, how do you deal with offense, son or daughter? How do you deal with an offense, a d- young adult? Not that if offenses will come, but how you deal with it. Right. So there's a scripture in uh, Hebrews that says that be careful they're, they're not root up in you, uh, rise up in you a root of bitterness, mm-hmm. and by it you and others be defiled. Yes. So we have to be careful that we don't carry offense, not only for ourselves, but for others, yeah, it's because it's called unforgiveness in the Bible. Right. And unforgiveness blocks the grace of God. Mm-hmm. So yes defend the defenseless yes stand up for justice for those who have been unjustly hurt or or um you know unjustly dealt with and but that person who was offended that person that was hurt, is going to have to get, take that to the cross and let jesus take the offense out of our hearts so that we have power to live our lives mm-hmm. once again i can't allow the um uh, injustices of others towards me as a person right. to determine my destiny to move forward. Yes. So um, this is a bit controversial, but let me just say it this way. Everybody is a victim and everybody is a victimizer. Mm. So biblically, everybody has sinned and everybody's been sinned against. Right. Some of these sins I can't even say in a public setting because they're so heinous yeah. and, and are so... Uh, 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 destructive. That's why we run an anti-trafficking organization. Right. That's why we we don't believe that's okay, and right. we're going to stand for injustice. But the one who is unjustly hurt, even to the extreme, let alone the little day-to-day things that happen in our lives, you're still going to have to forgive mm-hmm. to be free to experience the grace of God. Right. Whether you're the victim or the victimizer, you're going to have to ask forgiveness, and you're going to have to receive forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, to move forward. Right. I wish I could tell you another way, but that's just not what the Bible says. Sure. And the Bible's our authority to get us back to grace. So we have innate sin. We've got generational sin. We've got the sins of others done towards us. And, it's, and what we can't do is carry a fence forward so that we have power actually to deal with injustice right. from a pure Jesus kingdom perspective. Right. And then the last one is we have our own sin. Ooh. Uh, you know, don't leave that let, one out. <laughs> yeah. So let let him who has no sin cast the first stone. So he, let, let me let me let me paint it this way. And why not be controversial? Uh, it's not controversial to me, but just uh, let's say that uh, on Capitol Hill there's a Senate hearing going on, 
and they are grilling somebody who's being appointed for a position in our country. And they begin to bring up their past when they were 17 years old, 18 years old, 19 years old, 22 years old, 23 years old, and begin to, this group of senators, uh, both Republican and Democrat, begin to uh, evaluate this person's life from 18 to 24 years old. And we're not talking about criminal activity. Mm -hmm. We're talking about things they did that were sinful, that were licentious or whatever. Sure. And as, as, as if all these judges, all these men and women, uh, that they want their videotape shown from 18 to 24 years old. So, so they don't want their videotape shown, <laughs> but they're standing up there self-righteously trying to dig out time. everybody else's videotape. Right. If a person is contrite, repentant, and it wasn't civil law, they didn't break the law, they were just a broken kid or a wild child or whatever they were, if they have appropriately responded to that or uh, appropriately cared for that, then be careful lest what you judge comes back on you. Right. There's a scary scripture in Matthew 7. Jesus said, be careful what you judge, for in this way that you judge, that same measure of judgment will come back to you. Mercy, and then he says, be careful at looking at the speck in somebody else's eye when you don't see the log in your own eye. Right. So this is now my sin. Right. So when somebody says, I can't believe what they did, I actually can believe it because I've at least had the thought. <laughs> now, whether I got caught or whether I did it or whether I didn't do it, that doesn't make me more holy right. in order to judge somebody. Mm -hmm. So what I would just say to all of us, what I can control is my sin right. of unforgiveness, yes. of bitterness towards someone else, of what I've done uh, that's inappropriate. I can humble myself, ask forgiveness. Um, I can get help for uh, if, if I have a brokenness or an addiction that, that needs attention. Um, I can bring things to the light and confess sin so that right. it doesn't power over me anymore. Right. But if I don't own my sin, even as I'm trying to correct another person's right. sin, there's real, really no power and authority ultimately to set anybody free. Yes. So let me wrap it all up to say this. Good. Our goal is to get back to the Garden of Eden. Yeah, that original design. Originally Jesus done. came and died for sin that we might live an abundant life again, right. as God originally intended. Right. And, but... The only way to get into that abundant life that Jesus has for us is to acknowledge sin. Mm -hmm. Not just your sin, not somebody else's sin, mm -hmm. but to acknowledge my sin. Sure. And when I do that, then I'm able to live a free life. I'm able to, to live free before God and before man and actually have more energy to help people get rid of sin. Right. I have more energy to help change the world. I have right. more. We think we're changing the world by having bitter... Um, uh, resolves and in, in r raising uh, contingencies around bitterness, mm -hmm. but bitterness never gets to righteousness. Right. And so my admonition to all of us and my observation in the body of Christ right now is accusation is p a pandemic, right. even more than COVID. Right. And it's on steroids. Mm -hmm. And justice to demand that every person's anything and everything comes to the light and comes to account and we will not give up and i'm just talking christian to christian until sure. you pay the price right. for everything you did and right. there's a vengeance and an anger right and and it's not around disqualifying sin it, it, it it's around somebody's weakness or somebody's lack of recognition or right. i wasn't justified enough right and i just want to say to all of us be careful man yeah. that is that is tough ground there right. that is going to end up destroying mm -hmm. everyone and nothing left of anyone. Right. So if I demand, Jordan, that uh, when you offended me a year ago by being a little hot-headed and you made a pop-off at me and a statement, whatever, and I'm demanding you not only ask forgiveness, but I want you to tell the whole world, and then I, and then, then, then I demand that you no longer am a leader in the body of Christ, you're no longer, you have no right to teach a class on parenting, or whatever it is, right. because of something you did a year ago that you have owned, repented of, and we've, we've reconciled, then there's nothing left of 
the people of God. We're just, we're yeah, just who can stand, we're, who can stand, right? <laughs> so what uh, my advocacy in relation to sin is let's all humble ourselves. Mm-hmm. Let's all go low. Mm-hmm. Let's all acknowledge our sin, but let's come to Jesus and to the throne of grace and deal with this the Jesus way, which is we can humble ourselves, we go to one another. If we can't resolve it, we bring other in, other people in. But the goal is so that everybody might be saved, right? <laughs> Not that anyone would be disqualified, right? Let's deal with it. Let's be honest about it. But it's a four prong thing. It's in you. It's around you through mm-hmm. through your family of origin and through what others have done to mm-hmm. you. And then you got your own stuff to add to it. If right. we we'll holistically do it, take care of it, then we'll find a way forward. Amen. You know, as we as we close down, as I listen to you this morning, I'm thinking about, okay, if we're going back to the cross, we're going back to look at who Jesus is. Right. I mean, ult- I mean he was the ultimate. I mean, he dealt. He dealt with sin. I was reading First Peter two this morning, and he didn't. This this one always gets me. Right. He was. He he did not utter a threat when people were just coming against him. He he continued to entrust himself. Yes. To the Lord. That's, ama- that's amazing. Yeah. And so we know, and like you were preaching yesterday, that basic scripture of uh, 2 Corinthians 5, that he became, he who knew no son, he became sin, sin on our behalf so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In him. Yeah. Those, those are basic, to me, those are basic scriptures mm-hmm. right. that as we're walking with God that we right. look at. But the power of those, so as I look at who Jesus is mm-hmm. and how he dealt with sin, mm. I'm thinking around that same passage in Hebrews that he's the merciful and the faithful high priest right. who sympathizes w- with weakness, uh, which, yes. doesn't doesn't accuse and right. pinpoint, right. and that's where the invitation to yes. come to find mercy and grace. Right. So I need that. Yep. You need that. We all need that. Yep. But then what if we turned around and we became like that, yes. not letting people off and just right. saying, oh, you do what you want to do, right. Right. but treating them as Jesus. Yeah, beautiful. Love it. Love it. So, so again, the wrap is, um, it's the life of Jesus, mm-hmm. it's the cross of Jesus, and it's the way of Jesus way. <clears throat> that, is, that is our way forward. Right. And, and again, people are saying, you know, where's the way forward? Where's the way forward? He's got a name. He had a life. He had a death. Mm. He had a resurrection. Right. And he sits at the right hand of the Father praying for you and me right wow. now to get it right and to entrust ourselves to him again. Mm-hmm. All right, we love you guys, and uh, may uh, the beauty of Jesus abound, our passion for Jesus and his purposes in the earth, and may we find a way forward over sin in Jesus' name. Amen.